Okay, so. Boundedness. So, what were the three types of bounded? Oh, there are four types. There's four. There's unbounded, bounded above, below, and bounded. So that's where it's bounded above and bounded below. So let's identify. Okay, there's way too much chattering going on. I just started. This could take a long time or it can take not as much time. Depending on you. So we need to uh, describe as bounded, bounded below, bounded above, or unbounded. So what shape is this? I'm going to graph it. It's a parabola. The leading coefficient is positive. So I don't, it's going to look something like this. I don't even need to graph this one. I know what the shape of this is. And so we would say that this is, it, there's an absolute minimum here. So we would say this is bounded below. That's all they want. Now the next one we're actually going to have to graph it because I don't know what, we don't know what that looks like. Can I cancel out all those X's? No. no, why not? There's a plus right here and I can't take it out of the one. So this one we're going to graph. Um, when you graph it, make sure you put parentheses around your bottom. well so I'm not I, this one I'm not gonna uh, Z box I'm actually gonna just shrink it down a little bit so I'm gonna go negative five five negative five five I'm just gonna make it in a little bit I still would like to see this a little bit better I don't necessarily I'm not necessarily worried about my X's but I am worried about my Y's so let's make our Y's smaller do negative one and one there it is. Cool, right? It's a cool looking function. So what do we say? Is this unbounded, bounded below, bounded above, or bounded? Unbounded. Completely bounded. Yeah. That's what boundedness is. You just look at it and decide. Yes. So like that graph right there. <coughs> they won't. What? They they don't. <laughs> because here, let's let's have this conversation. This is a good. I like this. Okay. Look at the look at the denominator here. Mm -hmm. And what you're asking is, if is x's get bigger, is it going to change? Think about a big x. Give me like a. Let's start with a hundred. So we have 100 over 1 plus 100 squared. That's good. This, this is going to be a little number. Then think about like a million. A million squared? What? This, so the bigger the denominator gets, the smaller your number is going to get. It's not going to all of a sudden change and flip. Even if you picked a negative number, the bottom is still always going to be positive because you're taking something squared and you're adding more to it. So it's not going to flip. Is that, is, is that okay? Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about are um, local and absolute extrema. And don't make this harder than it has to be. They make it sound uber complex, but <clears throat> so for local, what we have, what we're talking about is we have a local minimum or a local maximum. That's what they mean by extrema. By extrema, they mean a minimum or a maximum because that's the extreme you can go. Yeah. And when they say local, what they're talking about is something like this. Let me draw a picture. <laughs> So 
So we have local min or max, or we have absolute min or max. So on this, I drew it purposely, so we had some of both. So we have this guy here, and then we have these two right here. This is a bounded below function, right? The point, the absolute smallest it gets to, guess what that is? That's the absolute minimum. And if I flipped it over, it would have been an absolute maximum. The other two, if I looked at just this little area, I would be like, oh, oh that's a maximum. But when I look at the whole thing, is that the absolute maximum? No, just in that little area, it's the, it's the maximum. So that would be a local max. And this one would be a local minimum. And, and really, that's all it is. The absolute means it will never go lower or higher than that. Locals mean, well, right here, it's the highest <coughs> part of a curve. So let's, let's graph one and, and do it ourselves. Oops, eight. So f of x is x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 6x. Determine whether we have any local max or min um, or any absolute value or absolute ones. So let's go ahead and graph. Oh, my window's all sorts of crazy. Sorry, I zoom six. Oh, it's better. I see these ones, but I don't see all of it. What else do I need to see? I need to. So, what do we need? How do I need to change that so I can see it? So, what do you want to go to? Like negative twenty? Oh my gosh, it wasn't enough. Which negative thirty is enough? So, now use your calculator to find your min to max it. Do it. Did you find your maxes and mins? So what was your uh, absolute minimum? X equals what? Okay. And your local, I just, we should put a point, put it as a point. So negative 2.06, what was the Y's? 
I have it from the book. I'll just cheat. So, in our local Max. Um, 2 plus 46 in the line 1 plus 32. And the local Min? In the the Y, I, can't, um, I think it was that. It was right there. Okay. <coughs> Are you guys okay with the extremas? Mm -hmm. Okay. And they'll they'll say find the extrema. That's how they'll say it. That means find the mins and maxes. All right. Okay. So part of this is learning the new the new lingo that they use. The new vocab. Um, the next one is, uh, it's all about symmetry. And um, there's like, there's one type of symmetry we'll never use because it means we're not talking about a function. So let's talk about that one first. Okay. Um, if you had an equation that looked like this, this is not a function. Because y doesn't depend on x. x all of a sudden is depending on y. It's the opposite. It's the wrong direction. Um, graphically, this is what this looks like. It, will, it looks like a sideways parabola. And we know this is not a function. Why is this not a function? The vertical line test. Fails the vertical line test. Um, this is the only one that's symmetric. about the x-axis, but we're never going to use it because we are only going to deal with functions um, with, with symmetry, okay? So, but there is one that exists, but it's not a function, so we're not going to deal with that one, okay? Um, the, other, the other two uh, we're going to talk about, we, all, we will deal with it, and we'll find a way to uh, have kind of like a shortcut kind of a way to do this, algebraically. Um, the other one, the other example, so another example of the other, one of the other kinds is this. It's a parabola. Um, this is symmetric. About the y-axis. Um, functions that are symmetric about the y-axis, we call them even. And we will actually ask you, tell me whether a function is even, odd, or neither. So this one is even. And here's how you tell if a function is even. If it is even, then the original function equals f of negative x. So what you're going to do is you're going to put the negative x in the function and see if the two match. So let's practice it with the function I gave you. Okay? Uh, right now I see a lot of people not doing this. And I'm, I'm not going to be patient if you're not doing this right now. And then tell me you don't get it later. I'm not going to be patient with that. I'm sorry. So we have an example. We have f of x. So let's see. We need to see if f of negative x makes it work. So negative x squared. Well, what's negative x squared? x squared. So do, does f of negative x match f of x? Mm -hmm. Then you would say it's even, and if it's even, that means it's symmetric about the y-axis. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And then the last kind, that, and if it's neither even or odd, it's neither, so yeah, it's your choice. Um, an example of the next kind is this. The cubic function. This is symmetric about the origin. We call this an odd function. Okay. So um, there's a couple ways to think about symmetric about the origin. I envision this is like um, like a little like a pin holding a holding it down, and I could like pick this up and swing it around the origin. For me, that works. Some people think of it as a double reflection. If you reflected this over the x-axis, it would be here, and then over the y, it would land on itself. So if, it, if you want, visually, if you think of it as a double reflection, 
that also works. Algebraically, here's how we test. We test to see if f of negative x equals negative f of x. So, uh, so first we would have to do this one. So let's use our example here. So we, first we would need f of negative x. So that's negative x cubed. Well, what's negative x cubed? Negative x cubed. So first of all, I know it's not even because these two do not match, yes? And then the next one we got to do is negative f of x. So put a negative in front of this. So what is that? Do these two match? Mm -hmm. That means it's odd, which means it's symmetric about the origin. Don't worry, we'll do a more example of that. <coughs> Are we okay there? Let's, we'll do an example. We're on example nine, I think. Um, so the first one is f of x equals x squared minus 3. So the first one we're always going to check is even. Because for even, we just need to know if the function equals this. I already have this half of it. I don't have to worry about it because it's given to me. I do need to evaluate this, though. So in order to figure this out, what are we going to do? f of negative x, what do we do? Put a negative x in for x, right? Which is what you guys are saying. So what's negative x squared? And then minus 3. So does f of x equal f of negative x? Do these two match? So it's even, which means it's symmetric about symmetric about y axis. Yes. Um, let's try another one. So let's try this one. So the first one we're always going to check is even. So let's put a negative x in. What's negative x squared? x squared? Minus 2 times a negative x? Do these two match? No. Oh, okay, so it's not even. So the next one we got to check is odd. So we already have this. We just did it. Right? Now we just need negative of the whole function. So that means we're going to go negative and then write your function. And what do we got to do with that negative? Distribute it. So you get negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. Do these two match? No. So it is neither. There's no symmetry about the ones we look at. Is that okay? There's neither. So let's try another one. I don't know. It's been a year since I've done it. All right, so there's our function. It's okay, the science people turn something on. It's okay. We haven't exploded yet. So the first one we check is even. So what do we do? Put a negative x in. So we have negative x cubed on the top, 4 minus a negative x squared on the bottom. So on the top, what do you get? Good. And on the bottom, did anything change? Nope, still 4 minus x squared. Do these two match? Nope, they don't match.
But now we're going to attack odd. So we're going to put the negative in front of the function this time. And when we're talking about a fraction, if it's helpful for you to think of a negative out here as negative 1 over 1, do it. The negative doesn't go to both places because if it, you bring the negative to the top and to the bottom, it's pretty much you just multiply it by one. Mm -hmm. So that we want a negative one. So if you th when you have a fraction, think of it as negative one over one. Okay. So on the top you get negative x cubed. And does anything change on the bottom? Nope. Do these two match? Yeah. These two do match. So this is odd, which means we have symmetry about the Ooh, I can't spell today. Is that okay for um, symmetry? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, asymptotes. And we're actually going to go more into asymptotes later, especially the um, horizontal and slant asymptotes. Um, and we're going to learn some new, new notation. Because it's awesome. It's on page 92, in case you're curious. Um, I'm going to give you the definition here. Actually, no, we're going to do it with an example. Um, Let's look at this function in our calculator really quick. So put that in your calculator for me, please. Make sure you have parentheses around your bottom. You should have got something that looks kind of like this, right? Now, the vertical asymptotes we can find algebraically because the vertical asymptotes are what makes the bottom zero. So for the vertical asymptotes, <coughs> it's what makes the bottom equal to zero. And so we can actually find that. So if you take the bottom, set it equal to 0, solve for x, we can find those algebraically. So you have 4 equals x squared, square root. So x is plus or minus 2. And I'm going to ask you to do this for this homework. And then I'll make a little concession, but you need to practice it. We're going to learn about a new notation as limits. All right? So, and this directs, it puts you a step ahead in calculus, understanding limit notation. Here's how really we should define a vertical asymptote. So let's take the first one, let's take the negative two. So we're looking at this, as, this vertical asymptote of x equals negative two. So here's what we, how we do this. We're gonna take the limit of our function as x approaches negative 2, and we have to look from the left, and that's what that ne little negative means. We got to figure out what happens, and then we got to take the limit of our function as x approaches negative 2 from the right. So we're going to have two limits for every asymptote. And here's what you do. 
So this says as we approach negative two from the left. So what's happening to my function as we go from the left? Decreases. Decreases. So we would say equals negative infinity. What happens as we approach negative two from the right? It's increasing, so we say infinity. That's how we define that limit. So as x approaches negative two from the left, here's negative two. The little mine, the little negative up there means from the left, from the negative side of the number. What hap What's our function doing? going to negative infinity. As we approach negative two, this means from the right. So from the right, we're going up to infinity. Okay, so now let's, let's do the same thing, but we're gonna use the positive two. So we need to look at the limit of our function as x approaches two from the left, that's what the little negative means, and we have to look at the limit of our function as x approaches two from the right. That's what the little plus means. So from the left side of two, what happens? It increases, so we say it goes to infinity. And from the left, what happens? What, do you, what don't you get? Um, why are we finding negative infinity and we're, we're saying what's happening to the function as we approach a number from the right. So as I get closer to 2, what's my function doing as I get closer and closer to it coming from it at this side? It's going to negative infinity. Why we're doing this is we need to understand what limit means. And I can actually not even give you a function at this moment in our lives. I can tell you if it's bounded anywhere. I can give you any maximum or minimums. I can give you asymptotes with limits and you could come up with a reasonable idea of what this function looks like we're evaluating every part of any function ever given and this is part of the evaluation and this is mathematically how you were supposed to define asymptotes so until now we've been letting you cheat so this is the mathematical way to talk about an, uh, an asymptote and you're describing which way it goes so this is just part of the properties of functions that we're looking at. And after this, we actually have one more function, one more thing to look at, but right now. We're looking at. So those are vertical asymptotes. And right now, we're not going to algebraically find horizontal asymptotes. We're going to use our graph to help us. OK, so horizontally, there was no asymptote with this guy. But what's happening here? These guys are planing out somewhere. Where are they planing out at? Look on your graph, your picture. One and a half, or no, two. Two, negative two, right? So the horizontal, asymptote, um, right now that we don't have a shortcut for it, so we're just gonna have to go with the picture. Our horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative two. You said there's one at zero also? No. No, this is a perfect time to have also have this conversation. Horizontal asymptotes are also known as end behavior asymptotes. We're not worried about what's going on in the middle. They're telling us what's happening at the ends. As x goes way out, positive or negative. That's what the horizontal asymptote is telling us. And in the middle, a function can actually cross the horizontal asymptote. We're worried about what's going on on the edges the end behavior. <clears throat> Horizontal asymptote is also called the end behavior asymptote. Okay? Um, I'm going to define this here in a second, but let's do it now. AKA end behavior. And we always use limits to describe our end behavior. Okay? They're, they're, they work the same idea, but they're a little bit different. Um, so the limit of our function, and for end behaviors, we want to know as x goes to negative infinity, what's our function going to? And we want to know the limit of our function as x approaches positive infinity. Because we want to know what's happening at the ends. 
right? So when you look at your graph, as x gets more and more negative, what's the function get closer and closer to? Negative 2. And this one, as x gets more and more positive, what's our function get closer and closer to? Negative 2. That's your horizontal asymptote, also known as end behavior asymptote. We'll do another one. Right here. What's, what's this going to? As x get, that's where this comes in. As x gets more positive, as my x's are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, what's the function getting closer and closer and closer to? You're looking at your x's. As x's are getting positive, we're not paying attention to that anymore because I'm saying as x goes to positive infinity, okay. what's the function going to? So let me put it in here because I didn't do it. So you, sometimes you're going to have to use trace. Oh, okay, I see. So as x is getting bigger, what's the what's my function get closer to? Negative two. Negative two. So that's why we say as x goes to infinity, mm -hmm. my function gets closer to this number. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. There's asymptotes for you. Um, on this assignment, I will ask you to define your vertical asymptotes this way, but just for this assignment. And then after that, I'll just be happy with x equals, unless they specifically ask for it. But right now, I'm all, this assignment, I want these like this. Okay? We have one more example. To, oh, no. Let's do another one, actually. We didn't do example 10 yet. Um, I didn't write down the formal definition of horizontal and vertical asymptotes. I thought it was better to show you with an example. Um, but what this is saying for horizontal asymptote, if you look right here, this is exactly what we wrote. The limit of the function as x approaches negative infinity. They just said it's going to be an, usually a number. It's going to, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it can go to infinity or not infinity. But we'll talk about that. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Same thing, and then they did the positive here. And the vertical asymptote, we're approaching the vertical asymptote, the negative is from the left. We're approaching the vertical asymptote with the positive. That means you're coming at it from the right. All right? And it's either, these are going to either be positive or negative infinities for vertical asymptotes. Okay? Not both, one or the other. But I didn't want to write that one down because usually it causes more heartache than we need um, example 10. Um, identify any horizontal or vertical asymptotes of the graph. And we're going to do our vertical asymptotes algebraically if at all possible. So, vertical asymptotes. Or when the bottom equals zero. It factors. You're right. So how many vertical asymptotes do we have? We have one at two and one at negative one. Okay. So those are our two. Now to, to use limits to describe them, we're going to graph it. So might as well just graph this function. So it looks like that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to make a sketch on my picture so I can... Uh, oops. There you go. 
So let's let's do the neg let's define the negative one first. So x equals negative one. So the limit of our function as x approaches negative one from the left. <laughs> And then we also got to look at the limit of our function as x approaches negative 1 from the right. Is that okay? Are we okay with that setup? Okay. So as we approach negative 1, and then the little negative means we're on the left-hand side of it. So I'm over here, and I'm getting closer to it from the left. So what's the function doing as we get closer from the left? So it equals negative infinity. What about from the right? Increasing positive infinity. So can you guys, I want you guys to try the x equals 2 one by yourself. Uh, will you ever have it to where like, like the limits are the same? It will, it will happen sometimes, yes. You can't assume that they're always going to be opposite because they're not always. What does that look like? I can't, well I could, I don't know what the function would be. It just they'd both be going up. I don't. I don't know how. I, I'll have to find an example. Maybe they'll give us one. And maybe they does. It doesn't. But I never just automatically think it's going to be opposites every time. We're talking this. This first one we're talking about the x equals negative one. So I'm focusing where x is negative one. And the first one is from the left. So from the left-hand side of it, what happens as I get closer to it? As x approaches negative 1, what's my function doing? Decreasing. It's decreasing from the left. And if I come from it from the right, it's increasing. It's going to infinity. So you got to, it's on either side of that vertical asymptote line. This okay? So what happens as x approach 2 from the left? So negative infinity. And what about from the right? Positive infinity. That's how we do it. So are we okay with the vertical asymptotes? Okay, so now let's talk about our, y, our horizontal asymptote, also known as the end behavior. From your graph, where is the horizontal asymptote? Now notice, and I like this example, did it cross zero in the middle? Yeah. We're not worried about the middle. It can cross the horizontal in the middle. The horizontal asymptote is what's going on at the end of the function. Okay? So, the limit of our function, because horizontal is also known as the end behavior asymptote, thank you, we're worried about as x approaches negative infinity, and we're worried also as x approaches positive infinity. So what's the limit as x goes to negative infinity? So as x gets more and more negative, what's our function get closer and closer and closer to? Zero. As x gets more and more positive, our function gets closer and closer and closer to zero. Are those always the same? No. You're welcome. They are right now, but not, not always. Um, Alex, if you do notice that they are the same, you can actually write this as one limit. Because they both go to the same place, you can say as x approaches positive or negative infinity. If they go to the same place. If they don't go to the same place, you can't do that. Wait, we legitly have to write out the limits right now? To, for this assignment, yes. Le legitly. For reals, yo. Okay, we got one more. Um, match the functions. Consider an end behavior. All graphs shown in the same viewing window. Okay. Um, I'm going to write these down really quick, and then I'm going to... I should write them on a sticky.
Okay. So, we're worried about end behavior. And before I show you the picture... Oh. Thank you. Um, so, this, this example 11 is all about end behavior. So, they gave us this function right here. What are they talking about next door? So all they did from um, all of these is they just increased the upper power by one. It went from being an x to an x squared to an x cubed to an x to the fourth. And the question is, we needed to match it with the appropriate end behavior. So end behavior, that's where we're looking at the limits as x gets really, really small. And we're looking at the limit as x gets really, really big. So that's what we're thinking of here when we're talking about end behavior, okay? What's happening at the ends. So think about putting in a really big number. Does the plus one gonna change it when you're talking about a million very much? No. No, so do we even need to think about the plus one right now when we're thinking about end behavior? No. We don't. So really what when I'm thinking about end behavior, what I'm thinking about for this function is I'm really just thinking as 3x over x squared. This one I'm really just thinking of 3x squared over x squared, etc., etc. et cetera. So I'm going to just, in my head, this is what we're thinking about. Because the plus one is not changing anything when we're thinking about negative a million and two. All right. So, um, and now because we've kind of killed off that plus one because we're talking about really, really big numbers, okay. let's think about what it's going to look like. Um, question? Yes. Can we kill off some of the axes? That's what we're going to do right now. And then we're going to match. We're going to see how we did. Okay. So what would this one look like simplified a little? Uh, 3 over x. Yeah. So and anything over x kind of looks like this. So just in my head, that's what I'm thinking. What happens here with the x squareds? Three, three, over <gasps> three. What's anything? A constant. It's a constant. So that's going to look something like a flat line. Oh. It's just this, just without the one. And 3x, what's that look like? 3x, what's that look like? It's a straight line. It's a linear function. So it's going to look, the end's going to look something like that. And this one gives me a 3x squared. So that's going to look like a parabola. I care less what's going on in the middle right now. It's all about the end. So, are you okay with that? So now we're going to match them. And in our heads, we have this little <coughs> pitch. I'm actually going to pick this up, slide my book, and be a happy day. Can we actually see everything? Yes. That's a miracle. So, now remember, this, the first one, it's all about the ends. So what are the ends doing on these? They're getting closer and closer to zero. Is this one getting closer to zero? No. This one? This one? No. What about this one? Yeah. Uh-huh. So for our first picture, it goes to that one. The, the end behavior tells us that. I don't even need to graph it, I know. And the next one, the end behavior needs to look like a flat line. Not it's that. Not, it's that one. Because the ends look like it's plateauing at three. This one needs to look like a line right here on the ends, right? Not the middle. Care less what's going on in the funky middle. It's all about the ends. And then this one, is, the ends should look parabola-ish. Right there. There it is. And that's how end behavior can help you as well. Um, we're going to use all this stuff. We're going to go like crazy insane with it. And I think maybe on Friday, a.k.a. tomorrow, I might come up with some and have you guys sketch out functions. Maybe we'll do like a race or something. Um.